Okay, uh, Sahil, in this ayah number 19, uh, I'm going to quote it again. Uh, it says, uh, And similarly we awakened them that they might question one another, said a speaker from among them, How long have you remained here? They said, We have remained a day or part of a day. They said, Your Lord is most knowing of how long you remained. So uh, there's another part like uh, when they're going to send uh, one of uh, them to go get some food for them. Here, before moving on to ayah number 21, I have a question for you. Can you please uh, briefly explain the concept of time dilation? And there's, then there's going to be another uh, question following that. Well, it's a technical uh, subject. And I suggest everyone should actually try and read as much as what science has to offer on this. Uh, and then uh, see what uh, people who from from ancient civilization they they looked at this concept of time really interestingly uh, and then uh, you'll understand a lot more as to how to understand the concept of time and uh, without going into really core of details let me try and explain as much as I can so that we cannot break the flow uh, in Surah Maharaj, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> that, you know, a, a day in these angels, in these portals, yeah. a day for these angels, yeah. equals to 50,000 years of your planet. Yeah. Now, this actually literally means that there is a place where, uh, a physical place, where when you're in there, uh, or when you're traveling through that, uh, the distance, uh, the speed becomes so much, speed becomes so much. Uh, that when you are going to start your journey from point X, which is as close to what Arshal lies, mm -hmm. and then to the planet, mm -hmm. uh, when they, because angels have to be somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's the presupposition that angels start their journey from mm -hmm. the closest possible position mm -hmm. of where the, uh, the the Amr of Allah is actually received by the angels. Yeah. So when they actually travel down to earth and I'm specifically saying down so that we can get that concept even though it cannot just mean down it can mean parallel as well yeah so when the angels come down there is so much distance that even an angel takes a day with that speed but that day uh equals to 50,000 years. So, when, as a human being, we are going On to Earth. say that it takes 50,000 years for us from here to that place where the angels are receiving the, the commandments. Okay. On daily lives. Hmm. Every single second, every angel is getting some commandments to, to do whatever is going on, to, to run the processes and uh, intervene or, mm -hmm. or, or, or maybe just the regular laws of whatever, you know, what's going on mm -hmm. around us in every dimension. Mm -hmm. So, this opens two interesting concepts. One, irrelevant of the portal. Let's just take that marriage out. Mm -hmm. And then understand that there is such a big difference between wherever we are in terms of distance mm -hmm. and wherever the angels are actually uh, receiving mm -hmm. those commandments. And the other uh, concept is when you are inside that portal, mm -hmm. that actually reduces your... Uh, well, increase your speed so much mm -hmm. that if it were to take me 1,000 or 50,000 years at a normal human uh, cycle. To uh, travel that much distance. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I'm talking about the Earth's speed, which is not small. Which yeah. is the Earth's speed of revolving yeah. around yeah. its axis, uh, actually revolving around the sun in mm -hmm. this case. So when the Earth is going to take 50,000 circles around the sun, that's a lot of speed. Yeah. And that's a lot of distance. Still, yeah. it is absolutely nothing compared to that speed that the angel actually takes up from receiving mm -hmm. that commandment to, mm -hmm. to, to fulfilling that commandment. Mm -hmm. so, so, Einstein's concept of time dilation goes with the velocity of the moving object. Even though this, in this case, uh, mm -hmm. we can actually suppose that speed literally could be, could be, that speed is not even a factor here. Mm -hmm. Speed is not a factor. That, in, in the Quran, it actually, it literally, it, we can really deduce that it's not the speed. It is the, the, the platform on which they are actually traveling, traveling. that actually 
creates an, uh, a perception that they're traveling too fast even though they could not. I mean, there's a possibility that they're not traveling fast. They're just transcending through a portal. Yeah. And for that, they just it takes about 24 hours. Yeah. So that's an equal distance of uh, as Earth's circle around its own axis. Mm -hmm. That's one day, right? Mm -hmm. So one day on Earth, mm -hmm. that's 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So 24 hours around 25,000 kilometers, which is the, the diameter of the, the, the planet. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the kind of speed that takes for, 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 for that portal to be crossed. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that with me at my normal speed, it will also take me 24 hours if I can find that portal. Portal, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it does not really require my E equals MC squared theory. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it can, but, if, but that would require for me to travel to enormous speeds. Yeah. In this case, if, if, we, if I look into the concept of portals alone, irrelevant yeah. of my speed, yeah. I'd still be able to do that. And you mm. can further argue yeah. that, yeah, you know what, the portal increased my speed, but yeah, okay, but the portal reduced my distance as well. Distance I didn't really well. need yeah. that speed. Yeah, yeah. So that would also mean uh, that, you know, both of the yeah. possibilities are pretty yeah. much alive in this case. In this second scenario, like I'm just only going to explain it in layman terms. For example, I have to go outside in the lawn, which is behind that, this uh, window. So if I go from here, it will take me one minute walking distance. I'll walk from here, open the door, go out, come all the way around and then reach this point. Yeah. But in the same time, if there was a hole the in this wall, wall, yeah, the wall yeah. I can go in one second and be in the lawn. Yes, that's okay. true. Yeah. And in this very surah, we are going to talk about that hole in the wall. Yeah. Because sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that hole hmm. through which Musa alayhi salam travels. Hmm. Uh, to a totally different dimension mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, why I'm calling it dimension because that was a hole inside thin air yeah. it was thin air where the, the, the dead fish yeah. jumped into the sea. Uh, a totally different uh, yeah that uh, they call the sea yeah and yeah. that's uh, that's one second thing from the Quran is which explains this really well is when Suleiman as mm -hmm. asked for uh, Sheba's uh, throne yeah the jinn Afrit he yeah. said before before you can stand up from whatever position you're sitting in right now, I will bring you that throne of Sheba, yeah. Sabah, yeah. throne of Sabah. Yeah. And the man, okay, who we know as, as, as Asif uh, in the commentaries, mm -hmm. that a regular human being, yeah. he said that that's too much of a time you're taking. it's going to take. <laughs> yeah. If you ask me, I will bring the same throne of Sabah before you can blink your eye. Yeah. Now, if you can actually see all of these things which you're talking about in the same equation, then you'll find out that if the distance between where Suleiman was uh, standing, yeah. or sitting, actually literally sitting, and the throne of Sabah, yeah. that is so small that the angels using the marriage would also take less than uh, the blink of an eye. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That is so easily understandable that there yeah. are pathways within the planet as well because Suleiman Islam is not intergalactic here. Yeah. He's in Israel at that time yeah. and uh, so that's about 1200 kilometers uh, east in, uh, in Yemen, uh, mm -hmm. the throne of Sabah. Mm -hmm. So this 1200 aerial distance yeah. is covered before the blink of an eye which is so under which is yeah very believable because yeah, we know is. a concept which takes yeah. 50,000 years yeah. Yeah. that's a lot of distance that earth actually revolves around the sun that's the whole orbit times yeah. 50,000 that's the distance yeah that the angel takes up in 24 hours yeah you know this yeah. is this is, and another third explanation is very complicated. I'm not going to go through that, but people who are really interested in these sort of concepts should also know that it's not a coincidence that the distance uh, of the planet Earth we're talking about here, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that this very planet, mm -hmm. when it is going to complete its own orbit mm -hmm. around the star that it orbits, mm -hmm. times 50 is equal to this very planet's orbit 
around its own axis. Okay. Do you understand? That's not a coincidence. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Hmm. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, let me just make it more clear. Like is, this, is it a scientific mathematical calculation that you just said? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that himself. Okay. So uh, let me just change it and you'll find out how, how amazing this concept is. Okay. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, 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 the time that an angel takes during the marriage, the trajectory of the marriage, is equal to what Jupiter, Jupiter, hmm. the 50,000 years of Jupiter, hmm. okay, uh, equals to one day of Earth, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that. Hmm. That would have meant a totally different calculation altogether. Hmm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your own planet, when it revolves around its own axis, is yeah. the time that we spend for angels. Hmm. And your own planet, when it completes the whole orbit cycles. into 50, 50 cycles, yeah. is the equivalence of that, that, that time that you know, we take. So that's, uh, that's, I mean, I'm not trying to put Earth as the center of the universe and, you know, so on, because Allah gives it so much importance yeah. and everything. Yeah. It is an, a very clear way of talking to earthlings, hmm. okay? And it's also, as I said, it's a third way of looking at it. It's also the fact that if we were to go to Jupiter and a portal towards Jupiter, and that would actually give us a, a template, a formula of how to actually uh, travel from Jupiter, because that's going to be the same for Jupiter. Yeah. It's not going to be the Earth formula in Jupiter yeah. or Mars. So that means there's a lot more magnetism here because I actually am going to use this word magnetism a lot in uh, Surah yeah. Kaf. So the Earth's orbit itself around the sun and its own axis hmm. creates a certain magnetic field hmm. and because of the motion that it actually uh, has. So that magnetism is to be factored in to, to, to understand how these portals actually affect the very time on, on, on the planet when we're going in or out of the planet. Hmm. Okay. So that's, uh, that's something for the people who are really interested in these sort of subjects. And I uh, given three different ways and angles to look at this. Uh, but since the Quran is filled up with these sort of things, so, you know, uh, please refer to that story of Hazrat Sulaiman uh, talking to Ifrit uh, in Surah Namal, I think. Uh, yeah, Surah Namal. And uh, that's the same uh, teleportation Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about and Surah Kaf will be, will be covering later on and the story of Musa and Khizr uh, uh, when Hazrat uh, Musa salam, uh, traveled through a certain tunnel yeah. uh, and crossed that tunnel and uh, the word for that that portal is tunnel in Surah Kaf yeah, yeah. Okay. so uh, that's how the, the, the concept of time uh, differential is now your question was time dilation, yeah. not time differential. Yeah. So time dilation would be interdimensional, mm -hmm. could be vertical. I mean, that will just, let's just talk about the seven heavens now. Mm -hmm. Now in the Hadith, of the Prophet says that the sky, the heavens are on top of each other and on the top, uh, over the top, uh, the seventh heaven is the throne of Allah. Yeah. Now in Surah Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, these universes are in parallel to each other. Yeah. So, if you combine both of these, this hadith and the, the ayah, you can create a whole sphere. Because yeah. the vertical thing is given in the hadith and the parallel uh, seven layers is given in the ayah. So, it com creates a complete circle. Yeah. yeah. So, that also explains that uh, we can't just look at this three-dimensional world and see of whatever's going on is the ultimate reality. Yeah. The existence, uh, the, 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 the very epistemology of all of this, mm. the existence of the beings of, 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 of the physics, uh, the physical beings of sun and the whole bodies, that seem as if they are within us. Mm. We are in the same realm and the same dimension. But they're so huge and the kind of invisible force like magnetism yeah. around them is so much that we can't just be so arrogant in saying that this is all of what it is. Yeah. So, if, for yeah. example, if I give you a hadith that the sun every night prostrates in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks permission, and Allah gives, him, gives it permission so that the next morning can come up. Rises again, subhanAllah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> now, this hadith actually opens up a really big door. Yeah. 
as to what's going on around around yeah. this this very reality and their yeah. interdimensional realities which we cannot see and comprehend so we yeah. it, we just try and fit Quran in there yeah you know the entire try and fit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's concept in there yeah. and all the angels in there that's yeah. that's exactly the opposite of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us yeah that there's so much more that you cannot see and in this very surah uh you, we're just about to hit that ayah yeah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the fact that you uh, you know it is only Allah who's going to do all of this yeah. it's only Allah who can hear it and see it you cannot see it yeah. and if the word is ghaib uh in samawat and in earth there's so much ghaib in samawat and in earth that only Allah knows of what's going on subhanallah in this i think uh, uh three four ayahs from now we're going to cover that in detail so this is uh this is uh, uh you know Oh, just to shorten the answer now this is the dimension that we actually see time in, the, in its very speed that it's it's, it's passing hmm. but we cannot be arrogant enough that this is the scale of time everywhere that every dimension enjoys yeah. especially when we know that the day of judgment is a single day which is going to be of 50000 uh, years of this this plan yeah. yeah. now ironically it's the same 50000 years yeah the formula is the same yeah So you have to understand that if you combine all of this we can actually yeah. see how the day of judgment is going to open up in front of us and what kind of because uh, it's a very intergalactic concept a muslim concept of day, ju- day of judgment is very intergalactic yeah. sun is going to enter the black hole yeah. uh ida shams kuvirat is yeah. going to be blackened so yeah. that's the day when it's starting yeah. and and the sun is going to rise from the west before that yeah. the way before that there's an again a heavenly body moving so it's all astronomical yeah So the time the concept of time in this dimension is not the absolute concept of time. Yeah. Even though the time in itself is absolutely defined by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala but it changes from dimension to dimension. Yeah. So when Hazrat Uzair al Islam or whoever uh, Allah Taala mentions in the story of the donkey, yeah. when he actually or in this surah surah yeah. kahf. Yeah. Uh, but since we're talking about surah kahf so let me just explain it to another story of that that person Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he was reincarnated and it took 100 years when yeah. he and he said i just slept for what a day a or, day a, part or a, day. A, a part yeah. of a day yeah. that's the same part that these people exactly. of the cave are saying yeah. that we slept for maybe a day or a part of a day yeah so we can extrapolate that these people also stayed in the cave for 100 years yeah we can say that yeah uh, as one of the many options because Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says nobody knows how how, how long they they actually slept Yeah. And even though the ayah says 300 years and some say 9, but if you read the Arabic you'll find out that it is a reference to what people think. Yeah. Now Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala told us because mm-hmm. in the very next ayah which you're going to read the Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they say that it's yeah. 300 and some some add 9 to it to yeah. 309 but the next ayah Allah says nobody knows except no, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala that how long Although uh, when they do the calculation they show that 300 solar years is equal to 309 lunar years yeah and that's so why so it's the same they, thing but allah they. subhanahu wa ta'ala says that no one yeah, nobody knows. knows so we can't just say they have slept for 300 years but we do know because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this very story in these very terms that these people slept for way longer that the kings yeah. have died and the coins had changed and you know the time that yeah. passed and it was a magnificent event for them an extraordinary yeah. extraordinary extraordinarily strange yeah. amount of Uh, time that yeah. that that the uh, extended period of time that that is not normal so yeah. in the story of the donkey when uh, when we see that you know that that time was not really being spent by that person yeah. but on this planet the time was spent yeah. the people of the cave the time were spent yeah. so we can also see that maybe uh, the, that person in front of Hazrat Sulaiman Islam also did the same thing mm. and you know brought back that throne in time mm. You know, in that case, he did yeah. the opposite. Yeah. It could be. I'm not. I'm not saying he did that. Yeah. What I'm saying is, since we know that we, there's a playable entity of time, yeah. we can try and you know put all the options on the table and try and find out how the, how this actually works. Yeah. Uh, or at least possibility of how it works. Yeah. Because we are trying to talk about the jal here. Yeah. And that's what I'm actually ref- going to you know conclude any and everything about Surah Kaf to the jal because that's the only motive of these sessions. Because Surah Kaf has million other meanings as well. But our sessions. are talking about the times of the jal and what is he going to be doing and the only thing that we know for certain about the jal is that the first thing he's going to do is he's going to play with time 
One day yeah. is equal to yeah. a hundred year, uh, a year. One day equal to a year would literally mean that he's actually, you know, uh, playing with this concept of interdimensional time dilations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, alam of course, but this is very easily deductible from all of this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ayah number twenty-one. In this way, we brought them to people's attention so that they might know that God's promise is true and that there is no doubt about the last hour. People argue among themselves. Some said, construct a building over them. Their Lord knows best about them. Those who prevail said, we shall build a place of worship over them. Masjid. The word is masjid in the Quran. Yeah. So, masjid. Uh, masjid. <clears throat> so the people who prevail, people who actually want that decision of what to do yeah. about them, they actually say, let's just construct a masjid. Now, I'm pretty doubtful as to the, what the, the current location that they actually say now hmm. in Jordan. Uh, is that really that, that cave that they're talking about? Well, all of them could be, but most probably it's not. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the, the thing about this ayah is that uh, these were, this was supposed to be a strange event for yeah. the people. And it was revealed. This is one of the ayahs. The, the, the symbol, uh, the, the, the key that was given to the people so the people can understand that if this can happen, everything else about the message of Allah is true. And that's why Allah Ta'ala uh, 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 combined the concept of Day of Judgment right with that, that very concept. As, as soon as any weird things uh, happen, yeah. uh, the, the pinnacle of all, of all weird things is the Day of Judgment. Allah, Ta'ala, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of us, every time, He sticks the, the day of judgment with the, 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 the ayah yeah. of Allah, yeah. so that uh, people would believe that this is why all of this whole, uh, you know, uh, stage is set of the, the yeah. whole uh, heavens and the earth. And so, understand, uh, this is a very clear indicator of that whatever theories about how long they slept and they actually slept and they actually did pass through time, That's true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it, re it was revealed on the regular public. Yeah. That these people just stayed over. Huh? How long would they be asleep yeah. and how are yeah. they so young? And they yeah. still remain youth all to, through the story of the, uh, the yeah. Quran. They do not yeah. grow old, a 300 year old, still alive sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. If they have had grown uh, older, they would have indicated to each other that yeah, yeah, before yeah. sleeping you were young and now yeah. you're old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. <clears throat> They will say there were three, the fourth of them being their dog, and they will say there were five, the sixth of them being their dog, guessing at the unseen. And they will say there were seven, and the eighth of them, eight of them was their dog, say, my Lord is most knowing of their number, none knows them except a few, so do not argue about them except with an obvious argument, and do not inquire about them among from anyone. Well, uh, do not inquire about them from the Jews is the meaning of this ayah because the context of this surah is the dialogue mm. with the Jews. Uh, so, uh, it's very clear that nobody can tell of how many were they. Mm. But since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the <coughs> plural term, so they were more than two. Because, uh, yeah. you know, if it, they were two, it would have been a very clear indication in, in Quran. So there were more than three, uh, more than two, could be three or could be 300, we do not know. So it, it, plus it's, 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 it's irrelevant as to how many these people were. Yeah. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a few of them do know do how know, many they yeah, are. Yeah. So that's the point. That's the point here that they were not 300, they were not 500. Uh, one of these options is correct. Yeah, yeah. We do not know which one, but you know, one of them, uh, one of these opinions Uh, is correct about about how many there were. Yeah. So the point here is that they were, you know, close to nine or seven. Uh, not in the thousands, not in the hundreds. Okay. Do not say of anything, I will do that tomorrow. Yeah. Now, this is something which is so interesting. This is uh, ayah number 23. This is so interesting. We can spend a day talking about this. Now, see, this is the only surah Well, one, one of the two points in the Quran where Yajuj and Majud is discussed. And uh, this is so, so ironic. And there are no coincidences. Make sure you remember that. And the, the, uh, the best part about this ayah is that all of a sudden it comes right in the middle of a story. 
which literally has no link with the, the story of Surah Kaaf. Yeah. But this ayah is placed so well that it actually speaks to us. Hmm. It speaks to us that this ayah does not, it's like a weird brick in the wall. It's not of the color of the regular bricks. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it catches the eye. Yeah. And why I'm talking about Yajud Majud is because Prophet says that the day they're going to say Inshallah is the day the wall is going to be broken. You have to understand. This is the this is the the, 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 the ayah which says say Inshallah and then you are going to uh, because uh, the the story with the context of this ayah is that the Prophet says come tomorrow and I'll give you the answer. I'll answers. give you the answer. Yeah. And the wahi didn't come tomorrow. Yeah. It took fifteen days. I guess. Now how does the wahi come? It comes through the portal, right? The marriage. So the portals did not open when, when Prophet Sallam did not say, and that's just my opinion, of course. So when the angels did not come because Allah Ta'ala wanted to teach all of us yeah. a very clear lesson at the time of the Jal, inshallah, is going to be that, that much more important. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, let's just come back to the Prophet Sallam story, that when Prophet Sallam said, inshallah, the door that's, to Wahi opens. Yeah, the door to Wahi opens. In other mm-hmm. words, the marriage opens. Yeah, and, and that's the same inshallah is going to open that Yajuj Majuj door. The door to Yajuj Majuj. Yeah. So all of these things are are either auditory. Yeah. Some words have to be spoken in order to. Yeah. And some key, key, keywords. We can't yeah. just you know start singing songs here. So some keywords yeah. have to be spoken. Yeah. Okay. Because darabna ala azanim also means that something was struck in their ear. Yeah. Somebody, some angelic yeah. a sound was made. So uh, that's one. Two it doesn't have to do anything with auditory except yeah. the fact that when people actually put their you know belief in God, yeah. that God is the only person who's going, to, uh, only being who's going to do that. They are going to get divine help from the the angels around us in the time of the jal as well. And those op- those portals might just open for us if we have to flee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, in the time of Yadud Majuj, Pro- Prophet Isa is going to flee or to Kohitur. So the real Kohitur, not the one that they show in the YouTube documentaries. So the, the <laughs> yeah, I mean this is uh, also to be taken into account because that's another belief of mine, my own belief, my own opinion that uh, Kohitur is the portal. <laughs> if there was any portal. Koitur had to be the portal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the biggest of his signs on Koitur. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's beyond uh, any argument that if there is a portal, then Koitur is, has to be one. There is no other th- extraordinary thing that happened bigger than what our Musa al Islam went through in the, on, the, on the journey of uh, Koitur. So coming back, so inshallah is the word Allah, uh, Prophet uh, Nabi al says. That the day they're going to say inshallah is the day the wall is going to open. Yeah. So it, this is why I, I really, and you know why I'm just talking about uh, Yajud Majud and the portals here? It's because this ayah did not really go through the coherence of the, of the, the context here. Yeah. All of a sudden, the people of the cave are, are talked about. All of a sudden, yeah. Prophet yeah. is told, do not say anything except when you say inshallah uh, about the future or whatever you're trying to do. So this is why. Uh, so I, there, there's one of its context which you already mentioned was that he did not say inshallah, so the wahi stopped. And then there is for the end of times context yeah. related to Yajuj and Majuj. Yeah. That's very, very amazing. Yeah. Except when adding, if Allah wills. And remember your Lord when you forget it and say, perhaps my Lord will guide me to what is nearer than this to right conduct. Another kalima at the time when you forget inshallah. Mm. There's, a, there's a backup plan. Yeah. So yeah. this is another uh, recovery Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as human beings to us as gift that if you forget inshallah, say this, whenever you remember that, you know, I will be guided by Allah for the shortest possible, the closest possible yeah. solution because I yeah. uh, missed out on the, 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 the right way of beginning my journey. Yeah. And they remained in their cave for 300 years and exceeded by nine. Yeah, that's the transla- translatory. Uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say error, but you'll have to understand when the uh, verse to verse translation is done, it is not done through a certain context. So if you look at the whole context, you'll find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to what people are saying. Hmm. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Hmm. Hmm. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what the people are people think they are doing. So it's joined with the ayah before the inshallah yeah, 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 part. So. Okay. So uh, people think that there are 300 years and some add nine to it, even though the next ayah is. Say Allah is most knowing of how long they remained. He has knowledge of the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth. How seeing is he and how hearing. They have not besides him any protector and he shares not his legislation with anyone. Legislation is hakam. Uh, so, Hukmihi ahada. Yeah, so hakam of Allah is not delegated. Hmm. Make sure you understand that there is never going to come a time in this surah uh, which is saying that there's not, we're never going to come a time and we are going to be able to uh, control all of these portals. The control is with Allah only. So uh, we can use them but not control them. But before this, can you repeat this is the whole uh, ayah? Because it's a very important ayah in this in this context. Uh, the one before it? No, this, this, this very ayah. Just you want the Arabic? Restart this. No, no, in English. Okay, I'm going to read Abdul Halim this time. I was reading from Sahih International. Mm -hmm. Say, Prophet, God knows best how long they stayed. His is the knowledge of all that is hidden in the heavens and the earth. And there, see, there you go. So this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word ghaib. Hmm. This ghaib word is <coughs> such a... We can't just take a meaning that, oh, this is about a number. Number is not ghaib. You have to understand that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some of them know of how many they are. So, some people, some human beings knew before, three ayahs before, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some of them know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. not totally ghaib. Some people know. But this is a very, very good way for, you, for us to understand when... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the whole event. Allah, ta Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the knower of the ghab between the heavens and the earth. Hmm. That means all of this, all of this was happening in a totally different uh, dimension. Hmm. And this is what ghab is. And this is what, what, what clearly is depicted in this ayah. So that actually further signifies that why we would have been in an absolute terror when we would have looked at them because this was a matter of ghab being revealed. Yeah. This was, this is something which is, uh, again, I just get terrified by just thinking about it, of what was the shape, size, things going on around them or why would that be such a terrifying, terrifying sight to see seven, eight, nine people sleeping or just awake inside the cave, yeah. in a wide space, by the way. In a wide space, they're just laying down, and uh, this is a matter of ghaib, which is why I'm actually trying to refer. And the word samawat comes in, that means that this whole dimension, this whole uh, cave, yeah. open, or could open, could really mean that it opens up into a totally different uh, place in the, in the heavens somewhere. And recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is no changer of his words, and never will you find in other than him a refuge. This is the ayah where I actually started to believe that uh, at the time of the Jal, the Kirat of uh, Surah Kahf hmm. will be able to help us open up some certain ways uh, hmm. of how to hide and where to hide and where to run and where to actually hmm. disappear. Uh, and this is the, the, the ayah which actually just gave me that, that, that clear feeler that it is all, uh, it could be uh, an auditory mechanism hmm. which, you know, uh, uh, opens up those pathways or gateways or stargates or whatever. Yeah, by the way, Abdul Halim does not say recite. He says, just Prophet, Arabic. follow what has been revealed to you of yeah. your Lord's scripture. What's the Arabic? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا. No, let's just the first four, five, six words are. Yeah. واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك. واتل ما. So, uh, so from رتل. Uh, yeah. So uh, this means auditory. You yeah. have to recite it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but it's from the tilawa, which yeah. means follow. Because but also means the moon, uh, recite. Yeah, it says moon follows. Uh, in, yeah, in the Quran, but it can be. Lava. It can be. So I'm hmm. just saying it. it so cannot, Sahih International says and recite what has been revealed. And yeah, Abdul Halim says follow means, what has been revealed to you of your Lord's scripture. Yeah, but since it is the same Masdar, so 
both ways. Yeah, actually. both ways you are have equally to follow yeah, as well as recite. recite. Yeah. And since uh, we're talking about auditory mechanisms <clears> here, <throat> we can extrapolate a sense that you know it could be a sound resonating thing, because uh, this is uh, the I, uh, the the tilaw of the Quran we're talking about. But the, in this ayah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has used the word wahi, not Quran. So, you know, this is something yeah. which is uh, uh, interestingly for 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 people to actually connect all of those ayahs before this one. Subhanallah. Okay. And keep yourself patient with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening, seeking His countenance. And let not your eyes pass beyond them, desiring adornments of the worldly life. And do not obey one whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance and who follows his desire and whose affair is ever in neglect. Yeah, that's the ayah of, uh, it's, it's a clear ayah of taqwa. And <coughs> before that, uh, let's just go back to the, the previous ayah before, uh, the mm -hmm. one before this. Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly read this because there's a, uh, there's a concept here that we need to be better understand. Arabic? No, 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 the English. And recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is no changer of his words and never will you find in other than him a refuge. Yeah, that's it. So this is, uh, this is the, there is no change. Uh, if you recite other translations, you'll find totally different ways of talking about this very There clearly. is no changing his words. Yeah. So that's the power of the Quran we're talking about here. And uh, there are going to be times when uh, we are going to have different versions of the Quran, which of course is going to, which already has started. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, at the time of the Jal, there will be 1400 year old Qurans, and you know, those pieces will be found. Yeah. Uh, and that's very obvious. That's one of those things that, you know, people do just to assassinate the very core of the knowledge yeah. of. So, this is the ayah which, which uh, locks. The, 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 the sanctity of the Quran because uh, uh, when we say inna uh, lahul a lot of commentary comes into play that you know the core of the message will be you know the, the whole uh, deen will be saved this is what the what the, the Almighty is saying but in this ayah there is no doubt these are the words, words of, of Allah. Allah so the sequence the stress points the uh, the, the, the whole uh, you know the book is going to come into a lot of danger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that go keep to the actual original Quran that you are going to have and SubhanAllah. and this is something which is which is very, very probable. Well Allah, of course, very probable that the first strike of the child is going to be on the on the Quran. So that when the Quran is shaken up in its meaning or in its literal literality or uh, contextuality or, uh, you know, the phrasing or the f stresses or meanings, could be anything. Uh, if I have to assassinate somebody's uh, book, I can, uh, even I, as, as my, my own li low IQ can think of so many angles of assassinating a book so that, yeah. you know, the whole value just, you know, diminishes. So yeah. this is going to come in and this actually is one of those uh, powerful liars which you have to understand. Actually, it did happen in the past. I forgot the time, but the in some excavations around uh, in some uh, some Arab countries uh, they did find out something and there was a huge article published by some orientalists of that time that we have found the actual manuscript of the true Quran and that ha was very very much different than the one we have here um, then uh, our scholars uh, may Allah reward them they had to write entire books refuting that claim where they then proved that this is not the actual manuscript, it was the writing practice of the students of a madrasa. They were practicing and uh, then th this is what the, that was buried and found out. So I believe from what you just said here that maybe before the time of the Jal there will be too much doubt casted on the authenticity of this book and then ultimately someone might come up that yeah. hey, we've just found the true manuscript yes. of the Quran or no, this Ali's Quran that he actually made, or yeah. other Zed's Quran, yeah, or this yeah. is a Zed's yeah. Quran, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or you know other Sahabas, which they were copies yeah. which were yes. compiled. It, it, I've yeah. heard that in a few debates at some universities that there were many Qurans which Abu Bakr Siddiq actually oh, yes. called for, and <coughs> I'm thinking uh, that that was burnt that very day. Every yeah. single Quran was burnt every 
of that very day yeah. so that there is no more doubt left that the only copy that we have is the copy of the prophet yeah and then they even uh, cast doubt on on usman radiallahu by saying that he burnt the the, uh, the authentic the, the, ones yeah, yeah, the real and ones. he kept the unauthentic <laughs> yeah. ones yeah so, so anyways may allah save us from this fitna so this is something which is a which is a key for us to understand that you know this could be one of those uh, uh okay so uh, i'm going to read the ayah again sure and keep yourself patient with those who okay i'm going to read abdul halim content yourself with those who pray to their lord morning and evening seeking his approval and do not let your eyes turn away from them out of desire for the attractions of this worldly life do not yield to those whose hearts we have made heedless of our quran those who follow their own low desires those whose ways are unbridled this is the uh, ayah number 28 uh, well this is uh, again uh, it's actually a very deep concept very, yeah very deep this concept. is a kind of jama at the time believers will have to find yeah. believers there is no other and it is such a big concept of islam that you know the person says you are going to be raised up on the religion of your friend subhanallah you know this is how That's big of a scary. problem that is yes very very scary you have your religion is what your friend's religion is so this is how big of, and and you know i'm a student of psychology so i understand how this works i'm not yeah. going to go into that concept even though i should at some epidermal level however in the time of a dajjal we will be finding people of our belief like right now we find gold we'll we will be looking for them and they mm. might or might not be those social media handles or whatever we we'll might have to physically look for those people who are the believers of allah and they're left out and there 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 has to be a a a a, a, gr- a grouping or a gathering or, or 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 a linkage between all of those believers yeah this is not a solo event this uh, yeah. the jal uh, anti the jal movement and it also says like and let not your eyes pass beyond them desiring adornments of the worldly life yeah like well, that's, uh, that's at the, the same anti- time yeah. we'll be having so many of the people who will be convincing us yeah. otherwise maybe we people call from rationale our own kin yeah. and family yeah we will yeah. there will be so yeah. in the first ayat we covered that yeah. yeah our own sons and daughters or god forbid khuda na khasta or our mothers and fathers yeah would be on a totally different pathway and you will be able to do anything about it and the angle in the next two ayat it also refers to that as well of what to do when uh when, you know because guidance only comes from allah and whoever he guides is is, uh, is the only yeah. uh person who is going to be guided so the, the the point is you need to know the power of 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 community and uh the only way to actually save ourselves is to keep our company clean and make sure we keep that company <laughs> you have to understand that we have to be in jamaat all the time and we have to be in 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 a, in a in a form of a group in a form of a family uh, islam is never a solo mission islam is a mission of uh uh you know connecting people and helping each other out in uh, this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is told prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is told yeah in this ayah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is told to get people together and make sure your eyes are you know looking at them and they're yeah. actually those, those are the right people uh, he didn't even need those people yeah. that's the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we're talking about although for the test of this dunya even if we are alone we yet still have to be on uh, like millat ibrahim you know yeah like yeah yeah, yeah milla yeah that's that. but at that yeah. time of the jal we will be scattered yeah so you have to understand there has to be mechanism yeah through which these believers have to be in uh, in awareness of wherever everybody is it's like uh, looking for a brown person in uh, in in, uh, in new york you can spot it right Yeah. but that's a that's a physical phenomena yeah we need to understand of how we are going to actually be able to spot those people uh who are uh, the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at that time they will be hiding yeah and that's the problem in this ayah we we we, we, we shows us that we'll have to do 10 times the work because all the people will be hiding why would he not be hiding that's a commandment of the prophet sallam yeah to run and hide yeah